The inductor in figure one has an inductance of 0.22 Henry's and carries a current in the direction shown, right to right to left, B to A, that is decreasing or lowering at a uniform rate of di dt of negative 1.5. All right, so I'm going to assume that the lowering is the negative there. That is that it, basically that's not a double negative. Now it's like lowering at a negative value, just it's lowering. Uh, find the self-induced EMF. All right, so for this, start up with a, so usually start by drawing a picture, picture's drawn. So then I'm gonna do formulas, formulas, and I just do whatever formula is basically relevant, whatever intuitively comes to mind, which in this case is gonna be EMF, this has to be an epsilon for EMF, voltage, negative L, di dt, where we know that di dt is constant. So this is basically the definition of inductance. And for different shapes of inductors, we have different formulas that we can use, but they give it to us here, so that is easy. And so for this, we're just gonna say that EMF equals negative L, which we're told is 0 0.22, times di dt, which is negative 1.5 times 10 to the negative second, equals if I was a better person, I could do this in my head. I am not. So I'll do 0 0.22 times 1.5 times 10 to the negative second. It's going to give us a small number. This seems reasonable. 0. Uh, 0. 0. 0.033. 0. 0.0033. 0. 0.0033. Okay. So let's take a look at this real quick. 0. 0.0033. Yep. This seems reasonable. And one key point here that I kind of glossed over is we had double negatives. Double negatives cancel. Two negatives become a positive. And so it is positive uh, EMF. So what it means by that is that is in the same direction with respect to the current I. So when we come down here to this question, which end of the inductor A or B is at a higher potential? So this is going to be high potential, this is going to be low because the EMF is creating the same direction, basically in the same direction as the current. And that's what that means by that negative sign. So to backtrack a little bit, this formula, this comes from, I think it's Faraday's law, Lenz's law, EMF equals negative deflux dt. So it's just, you, you take that formula, you derive this definition for inductance. And we do something very similar with induced uh, EMF, induced current, uh, induced magnetic field with this equation. And so it's the same idea. So that is the math way of doing this, B right here. And one um, human performance trap you're gonna, you could fall into easily, which is understandable, is we say which, induct, which end of the inductor, A or B, has the higher potential. And your first thought is that, well, B has to be higher potential because current is flowing this direction. If current is flowing that direction, current flows from high to low. And that is pretty much always true, and it is true in steady state. But there, it's, if you look at the math, that's not always true according to this equation, and it's not always true. So I'm gonna back up real quick and kind of, I use the hydraulic analogy. Whenever I'm doing physics uh, two and I want the right answer, and I'm using batteries, resistors, capacitors, inductors, and I want the right answer, I use a hydraulic analogy. So the way the hydraulic analogy works for this is we basically have a battery, which is a pump, and it's connected to both sides here, and that's creating a positive um, voltage here, zero voltage here, difference makes current flow. In the hydraulic analogy, um, let's see if I can draw this. I really can't draw a good water wheel. So the, the, water, the um, water wheel is the equivalent of an inductor. And so the idea is, I is current, so which is the water flow. This is a pump. 
this pump creates a differential pressure. And I'm going to draw just an inductor here because I can't actually draw a good water wheel in a schematic. And so what happens is the current is going up here, causing the water wheel to spin and the current coming down. And so what the water wheel does is this wheel right here has momentum. And the idea here is this momentum is causing the water. At first, it's going to be hard to get the water wheel to spin. But once it's spinning, it's built up this momentum. And even if we cut off the power from the pump, this basically flywheel or water wheel is going to cause the water to continue flowing. It's going to continue the current flowing. And so that is another way of saying that this water wheel or this inductor is going to oppose the change in current. It's going to want the current to be consistent and steady. And so like a flywheel, water wheel, it's going to continue it, keep it moving that way. So the idea here then is we have this battery here, we have this inductor here, and if um, we want to know what has the higher potential, so it tells us that the current is decreasing. So basically, if this battery dies, if that battery dies, the current is going to be lowering. Well, if this current lowers, this water wheel is still going to have momentum, and so it's going to cause the current to flow this way, and that is the induced EMF. That pressure caused by this water wheel, which is the hydraulic analogy, a, um, an, an analogy, is what causes the water to flow, and that's what causes a EMF. So that's what's going to cause the EMF to be higher on B, lower on A, which causes the current to flow. So the, the inductor, these loops of wire, is going to make the flow of current more continuous. And the analogy for that is the water wheel. There's also more parts of the analogy. I'm not going to go into it here. But if you are familiar with the hydraulic analogy, you're like, oh, okay, that kind of seems sense. Makes sense. So the whole point I'm going with this secondary rant on the hydraulic analogy is it does feel intuitive that B is higher than A, and that's what causes the current to flow. With inductors, that's not always the case. You can come up with some weird, tortured, extreme examples where if the um, current level is increasing drastically, it would actually create an EMF going the opposite direction, and you could actually find A higher than B. Not very many real-world examples, but it is possible. And in this case, my advice is it's good to understand intuitively, but trust the math. So I hope it helped with this problem. See you next time. Bye.